Hey guys, uh, let's talk about uh, installing Ubuntu using uh, DE Bootstrap. Uh, what I've done is I've set up a little virtual machine here um, running uh, Ubuntu Live CD and I'm going to switch over to a command line and we'll go through the process of uh, using DE Bootstrap to set up our new system. What we want to do first is uh, make sure we install uh, DE Bootstrap. Now, if you look, you'll find this on uh, a lot of distros. Uh, you can install Linux from inside Linux using uh, DE Bootstrap. Once this is installed, we're going to go ahead and partition our drive first. Uh, let's see what drives we have. SDA is what we want to partition, so let's go ahead and partition that. Oops, actually I want to use, uh, let's use CF disk, it'll be easier for you guys to see. We're going to go ahead and uh, create a new primary partition. Let's make this 8,000 megs. Beginning of the drive, bootable. Uh, let's create another partition, a primary. Let's make this one our uh, swap partition. Oops, I clicked out of the VM there. these partitions. Yes, for sure. And we'll quit. Now if we take a look, we have two partitions. We have to make file systems on them, so let's go ahead and put an ext4 partition or file system on uh, SDA1. Let's do swap on tab SDA2. And we can turn swap on. Whoop. Okay. Now we need to mount these partitions so we can use them. So let's first make a directory to mount them. And let's mount our root partition, which is going to be devsda1 to the folder we just created. Okay, and now we're going to use the de bootstrap command. And what this will do is download a bunch of packages and install them. Uh, basically a core ch root system, not a complete Linux system, into our mount folder there. So I'm going to pause the video, let this finish, and uh, we'll come back and finish up here when it's ready. Okay, now that that's done, we have a perfect ch root environment set up at uh, mount install, but we want a fully working system, a lean mean system. So what we're going to do is uh, copy our... Uh, our sources over from this system to our new system. And then we also need to mount a few things to continue because at this point we don't even have a uh, kernel installed on our new system. So we're going to bind mount uh, the dev folder from our working system. And we're going to mount proc over there. And 
now we can ch root into our new system. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're in our new system. So we need a few packages to actually boot this machine. Uh, we're going to need uh, a language pack. kernel image and we also need to install grub on this machine so let's go ahead and do that and I'll go ahead and pause here and uh, we can accept this and be back with you after this installs all right while installing you'll uh, eventually get to this point where uh, grub will ask to continue with configuration so we're gonna go ahead and hit OK and we want to install grub to the root of our drive which is dev sda not dev sda1 which is our partition go ahead and hit ok and it'll do its thing i still have a few packages to install and then uh, we'll be right back now that that's done uh, there's still a few things we have to configure because we haven't had an installer take care of anything for us so uh, one thing we want to do is, since we're going to be using this setup, setup, is set up our time zone. So we want to depackage dash reconfigure TZ data. And we can select our area. And I happen to be on the eastern time zone. So we'll go ahead and select that. Uh, we also want to add a user. We can use the add user command, type in a name, uh, enter a password for that user. I don't need any of this info, so we can just keep hitting enter. Yes, the information's correct. Um, we also want to add that user, Histo, to the sudo group. Uh, that'll allow us to run commands as root. So G password, G P A S S W D, TAC A histo or the username will let us do that and we that'll add them to a group and the group we want to add them to is sudo. Okay, and we also want to set up networking when we reboot. And there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, one of the ways is manually. Uh, we can set up our host name here. Let's go ahead and set our host name as uh, YouTube, and you do that by editing the uh, etc hostname file. Uh, we also want to configure the network interfaces file to bring our interface up on boot. So what we're going to do is auto eth0, which is my wired interface iFace, ETH0, INET, and DHCP. That way it'll bring the interface up on boot. And the other option is we could use uh, WICD, which is a nice uh, application. You can has a curses front end, so you can use the command line to easily configure uh, your wireless or wired uh, adapters in command line. Now what we're going to do is at this point we should be good to go so we're going to reboot. Um, let me go ahead and exit the, the ch root and I'm going to reboot this machine. Now while it's rebooting, I'll go ahead and uh, remove the ISO I have mounted, which is just a live CD, so I could do uh, install this. Uh, you do need a live operating system running, whether it be from CD or Netboot or whatever, to use the eBootstrap uh, to install in this fashion. CD's ejected. Let's see if our machine boots.
apologize for the time delay here. It's uh, running on a laptop and a virtual machine, so it's kind of slow. Uh, if you're running on physical hardware, you won't see this kind of delay here. And the splash screen would load for Grub. Um, there's an issue with the virtual machine with uh, loading Grub splash screen. All right, and we're in our new system. And there we go. We're up and running. Uh, very lean system. There's just virtually uh, just a base system at this point. I can install a window manager or whatever desktop uh, environment I want at this point. And thank you guys as always for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, please post them below. Also, please uh, subscribe and like the video. Thank you.